We're about to head off to 14 day trip in Woodland Caribou Provincial Park. Uh, we haven't had a big trip like this since 2019, returning back to Woodland Caribou. Uh, our plan was to hit Wabakimi uh, this year, but it was on fire in the western end where we wanted to go. So back to Woodland. Our road trip had us traveling 1,900 kilometers from Windsor, Ontario to the park. We did this over three days, staying overnight in Gaylord, Michigan, Wawa, Ontario, Vermilion Bay, and then into the park. So we spent the night in uh, Gaylord, Michigan. Didn't get too far, but we had left late in the afternoon yesterday and uh, we thought we'd break the trip up and leave a little bit early. My wife uh, got food poisoning last night, a uh, dreaded meatball sub from Subway next door, uh, and that wasn't good. Uh, she spent the whole night getting up every hour, throwing up and everything else. Um, so she's feeling a little bit better this morning, but we'll see. Hopefully we're supposed to be into the park uh, tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we're in Sault Ste. Marie, and because we go through the states, we have to pick up groceries and booze and all that when we arrive back in Canada. So we're here now and uh, gonna go get some stuff. Snack food? Check. Alcohol? Check. A little bit less sick than coffee? Check. check. Wawa General Store for all your needs. This is the Young Store Goose, and this is the real Wawa Goose. We stayed overnight at the White Fang Motel, located just off the highway in Wawa, and ate dinner at our favorite restaurant, Kinawabi Pines Restaurant, located right across the street from the White Fang. Along the way we visited our old pal, Paddle to the Sea, and got a little refresher on our paddling technique. West of Thunder Bay, we stopped for a late lunch at the Phil and Chill Punjabi restaurant. You heard me right, an Indian restaurant in the middle of nowhere. Our final stay over for the road trip was at the Pine Grove Motel outside Vermilion Falls. All right, we just turned on to 105 and we're off to our put-in at Lino Lake. It's probably going to take us 200 kilometers. It's probably going to take us about four hours. So. The road got washed out, but they've got a little makeshift road around, but it goes into the water. So I'm gonna walk her out first. Okay. 
it's nice and solid here. Yeah, we'll be okay. All right, we're here at the Lino Lake Portage. I think it's about a 300 meter to get to the lake. And that was kind of a, <laughs> a wild little four-wheel drive adventure to get off of that, uh, around that bridge, but we managed to do it. Glad I have a four-wheel drive truck. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how it goes when we get down there. We may go to Bunny Lake. It's two portages to Bunny, or we may stay just on Liano. So this lake is, or this trip, is a plan-free trip. And that's our sort of the idea is not to uh, get carried away in routes, but rather to uh, just figure out what we're going to do. Uh, once I get that canoe off there, I am going to park the truck. There's one other vehicle out here. And uh, I brought a spare tank of gas. Theoretically, I can make it out, but when we're in four wheel drive, as we were for most of that hike um, we use a lot more gas uh, so I brought a 25 liter and I'm going to fill the truck up before we go just on our for first portage to Lino Lake Lino Lake Just had the first lift over, but too shallow for us to canoe it in. We're gonna have to walk it up. Portage of today. This is into Bunny. We had that little lift over. And as usual, portages here are a rocky mess. This is a 300 meter trail into Bunny Lake. A little bit overgrown, but still being used. Bunny Lake. Just checking out this one campsite on Bunny. We spotted the chimney. Uh, we checked out two and we didn't like them. Uh, really poor tent pads, but... Nice chimney here. I think this is our, gonna be our tent pad. Looks pretty good. Knowing rain was coming the next day, we spent two nights at that Bunny Lake site. Becky is my uh, pole minder. Interesting tent tarp design. We're trying to keep the tarp <laughs> self-draining, which is uh, not easy with this size of 
part. We might not have to pump any more water today, though. Well, we knew it was going to rain, so we created the Shangri-La shelter. Two 10 by 10 tarps. It, uh, it sort of got uh, overweighted last night because it wasn't as self-draining as I wanted it to be, but we got her fixed up. You know, when your canoe leaves a mark on a rock, you can think of it as in two ways. One is, oh, that just took some material off of my canoe and damaged my canoe. Or you could think of it as marking your scent like a wolf. I've been here. Three, we're leaving Bunny Lake or Jake Lake. Just at our first little portage, it's like a lift over. But... Oh, I guess that's Well, it's called a lift over, but it might be more like a 60 meter, 25 meter maybe trail. But if they're all like that, wouldn't have too many complaints. Out, out of that little stream. We had uh, one little lift over, but that gave us deeper water. And just before the stream, there was two unmarked lift overs. That was a bit challenging. Off to East Lunch Lake. towards the end of it. Last 150 meter before we hit Lunch Lake and I think we're gonna camp at Lunch Lake today. It's the Portage Trail to Lunch Lake. Nice trail.
just at our campsite on Lunch Lake and we're going to be tearing down and moving off to Jake Lake which is only a couple portages away. After that the weather is supposed to turn bad on us for two days so I think what we're going to do and we got a nice day today is we're going to find a good campsite on, on Jake and uh, basically wait out the bad weather. Hi. Where's me? And we're off. Lunch Lake to Jake Lake. Two small portages. And, uh, and then setting up base camp. We just finished our first 200 meter portage of day four. And this is a little pond. Uh, we have uh, one, I think it's an 80 or, or something like that. It's a pretty small one. Into Jake Lake. Forty meter portage. True to its name. And true to well this is actually a better launch than most. <laughs> And we should be on Lunch Lake, just around that bend. It's our campsite on Jake Lake. And I'm just laying around while Becky's doing all the work. Okay, we're at our campsite and we're pretty much set up. I got the Goal Zero charging up the Sherpa 100 and Scuba booty's drying. We've got the, uh, the tarp shelter for the rain tomorrow. Uh, and that one should be self-draining. And our tent, uh, it's a nice campsite, but I do have some complaints about previous people who occupied this site. So I know we had uh, thunderstorms a couple of days ago, uh, but right behind the tent pad, this is what I found. So a Ziploc bag full of scraps of food. And you can see it's been gnawed through there. 
either by chipmunks or mice. And we're gonna burn this tonight, but I'm not gonna bring it to the fireplace until we get a fire going. But this is the kind of thing that attracts animals and habituates the animals to seeing a bag and wanting to chew through them. So, uh, oh, also the fireplace is full of toilet paper. So I'm presuming it was a few days ago where we had those thunderstorms because they did leave a lot of nice kindling and chopped wood and I'll bet you that they were preparing for a fire uh, and uh, basically they couldn't get one off the ground because of rain. But you can see toilet paper and other things in the well, fire. It might be our one chance for a good swim. Rebecca's $12,000 baby lock machine is not helping her in this situation. She said I underestimated the cost of her machine. That's what she told me. <laughs> so we got a little bit of repair and we set up another tarp around the tent just knowing it's going to rain all day tomorrow and thunderstorms and we don't have any fears about the tent uh, and its waterproofing integrity but it's just nice to be able to crawl out of the tent with a little bit of headspace where you just don't got rain and everything raining down on you so so that's going to be well that's why we brought two tarps along with our one up here and everything should be self-draining. Becky too, can none. twig stove this morning because it's going to be harder to do twig stove later this week. So it's the day of rain and we're expecting some thunderstorms today. Fortunately we're all nice and tarped up and uh, <laughs> my last line I have all my cordage out so you can sort of see here We've got uh, a hanging weight, <laughs> and that's just to keep the wrinkles out of the tarp, to keep the water flowing and self-draining. Uh, or it could be, you know, tetherball for the world's hardest cord uh, people. I'm gonna get you more noodles. Okay, for dinner tonight, twig stove version of beef stroganoff. And we've got our, our mixture of gravy and powdered milk, our egg noodles, ground beef, and the, uh, there's veggies in the ground beef as well. It's a chilly one, and it's too wet to have a fire, so we huddled by the little twig fire. 
tried to soak up its little bit of warmth that it could get. Day six, and we are leaving Jake Lake. Well, maybe. We're paddling down to the south part of Jake Lake. We're gonna check that out. Uh, and then if we wanna take on the two portages, uh, we'll be on into uh, Paul Lake. We call this a typical woodland caribou portage landing. <laughs> all rock, all bite, and all uphill. Well, this P400 on the route from Jake Lake to Paul, all I can say is it's got a lot of topo, two topo lines that get crossed all up that nasty landing so we typically have bad luck with portages that are 400 meters this one's no exception usually when we say p400 we're referring to a really nasty one in wabakimi and here we got a nasty one in woodland caribou Just about at the top of the ridge now. And I ended up dumping the canoe on the ridge not too far up. Just over there. It's like Noah's Ark on the mountain. <laughs> Becky's returning with her pack, so I haven't seen the end of the trail yet. It can't be that far. Line that we're paddling across to a 150 meter and then some stream work into Paul Lake. At the finish line here. It's a good trail nonetheless, apart from the steepness and that original landing site, which had to scramble the canoe up. But this, this is great. And this is one of those things where it's like a little hot scotch, and then we're back into a portage, but it's just a short one. We're at the 150 port after that little pond. Well, this is our campsite on Paul Lake. It's in an intermediate burn zone. So, uh, the campsites are a little bit hard to find. This is actually the chimney here. And then it's a bit of a haul to get the canoe up. And then up over this little hill is a tent pad. Now, fortunately, the tent pad is wonderful. You can stake right in the ground. There's a few stumps on the floor, but it is nice and flat. On the trail, a whole bunch of rose hips. So we're just boiling that up 
to make a rosehip tree tea. Very good for vitamin C, that rosehip tea. Still on Paul Lake, day seven. And we think we're gonna move. Uh, we're gonna get to the next lake at least, and perhaps Upper Kilbourne. Uh, this campground is just a little too cramped for us. And we're leaving the Paul Lake campsite, heading out to uh, Unknown Lake after three portages. Our 275 meter portage. As usual, landing full of rocks. The beginning of 275 is very uh, overgrown. Oh, not so bad. Better than I thought. Portage. Hoping for the best. Mint. Still some swampiness, but it's uh, hard under the feet as opposed to sinking to your calves in the muck. Oh, I spoke too soon about the sinking to your calves in the muck. Oh! with a canoe. meter portage it's pretty easy just a little hill at the bottom that would be worse if you're coming up this way as opposed to going the direction we're going but of those three the 275 175 and 150 this has been the nicest trail thus far all right we're on the unnamed lake between Paul and Kilburn Definitely eat lunch here. We couldn't locate any of the campsites on that lake and settled for lunch on a steep rock, the only place we could find to park the canoe. Heading off from our wonderful <laughs> lunch top. The lunch spot where we're sitting on little a ledge like mountain goats eating our soup and processing our water. Portage four of the day, a little 30 meter.
This is our obstruction. Sometimes with the beaver dam, you just lift over. But not here. You lift over and then you got rocks. So I think where Becky is is the place to go. Alright, we're on our destin la destination lake for today, Upper Kilbourne. And uh, we're going to choose, there's three campsites according to the map, all in the green patch on the left side. And we are going to be base camping for several days. Uh, so hopefully the fishing's good on this site. Checking out the uh, middle site on Kilbourne. <laughs> It's a rainbow, pointing the way to the thousand meter portage. Night of day seven, what's better than a single rainbow? How about a double rainbow? It's day eight, relaxed day on Upper Kilbourne. Becky was uh, sick last night, so that wasn't very good. Day eight, time for a swim. Oh. Whew. That feels pretty good. It's a very warm day, it's our first day of full sun. We haven't really been wanting to go in the water that much, but today, the jump in the lake is invigorating. So it looks like we got a smoke day day nine and at first we thought oh it was just the cloud it's not going away afternoon winds are kind of making it a little bit uh, clearer but, uh, and the air quality is not as bad as it looks we did catch a fish uh, this morning we got a pretty big one about six pounds or so at the boat a couple of times and uh, I couldn't get it in my net. It was too big for the net. When I tried to grab it by hand, he shook off. You know how it goes. The one that got away is always the really nice one. Although we plan to spend at least one more day on Upper Kilbourne, the smoky weather drove us off and we left the next day. On day 10, we left Upper Kilbourne, dreading the 1,000 meter portage 
forthcoming, the longest portage of our trip. We planned to stay on Kilbourne Lake, but couldn't find any campsites. Finally, exhausted, we did a makeshift campsite at the falls near the pond prior to hitting Lino. thousand meter trail and it is a wonderful trail so I'd rather do this than a smaller trail that's all rocky and hilly by any stretch how's this trail beautiful not a nightmare so far that's so far yeah we uh, we're doing, we took a break about 600 steps in, so we're at about the halfway part. And a uh, big trail like this, always like to uh, break it up a little bit. You know, that instead of killing yourself to get all the way to the very end, you know, drop your stuff, you get the uh, benefit of walking back without your pack up the second load. And just at the end of the thousand meter trail now. On the lower Kilbourne Lake 1.5 kilometers to the campsite. Looks like it's going to be a setup in the rain. Well, we could not find our campsite on Lower Kilbourne, so we're making our way towards Lino, doing some stream work next. Failing to find a campsite on Kilbourne Lake, we ended up setting up camp just past the falls near a large pond using leave no trace techniques. Taking off from our little makeshift camp at that stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
just finished the first of two carries. The last P400, the last portage of our route, although we got the <laughs> little portage trail from uh, Lino access point to our truck, about 350 meters. But we're back on our starting lake, it's day 11. And uh, a little bit shorter time, I think we're going to stay the night here on Lino. And then uh, we have a nice day tomorrow as well, so we'll decide whether we'll take out or keep, keep camping for a couple of nights on our, our last takeout lake. Day 11, 6.30 on Lino Lake, we're off fishing. Okay, last night on Lino, and we're gonna be eating a couple of pike. Well, on Lino Lake, it's our last paddle out. We're just paddling to the pudding from that campsite on Lino. We had a wonderful meal of fish last night. A somewhat unrestful sleep as my uh, sleeping pad got punctured. And uh, we ended up crowding on the one sleeping pad. Good thing it was extra wide. And yeah. That was uh, the end of the This is just at the uh, camping lot and they've got a, a bear warning there and the sign was eaten by a bear. Gotta love that. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much sums up our trip. Over 12 days we traveled a total distance of 46.5 kilometers. Doesn't sound like much, but we found it actually a fairly difficult trip. We had a lot of cold, rain, and harsh weather. We had rocky portages, unexpected liftovers due to low water conditions. We found it tough. Plus, Becky got sick a couple of times during the trip. But we made it through, and as usual, the park was a beautiful place to be.